Hunter x Hunter episode 112. <laughs> Begun. Wait, who is the first in? Knuckle and Mulirion, followed by Gon. Knuckle number one on the battlefield and in our hearts. Hello. <laughs> you got about half a second, maybe? No pressure. They did a great job animating their eyes. Like, you can see the difference in their motivation. How do they do that? The person or people who drew that? I wonder if those skills translate to real life. Are they good at reading people's faces? I thought that about Pixar movies. Do you guys know what a super stimulus is? It's when there's something that is usually appealing, gets magnified to a ludicrous proportion, and it sort of sends your brain into overdrive. Pixar does that with facial expressions, as does Demon Slayer. The other trick that both Pixar and Demon Slayer have in common is very high saturation. Monster X and X Monster. Are they the monster or are we? Who are the monsters really? <laughs> yeah, they, they should drag this woman out because of how significant it is. Peter's a little bit busy. Just as I expected, the unexpected. Expect the unexpected. Nothing can surprise you. We, we made a hole. Finally, we can see what he can do. Finally. I mean, I know he's a beast. He's gotta be. I see. The wings are just an extension of whatever this is. Like, self-molding. Need a hand? <laughs> oh, interesting. Interesting. Good, that's, that's good, that's great. Total abandon. Oh no, not shoot! I mean, it was going to happen to somebody. Shoot! Oh, okay. Oh, okay, I was sleeping on shoot. Good, good, good. I mean, I was fully expecting at least one of them to shut down. In particular, among the group of people that had never encountered any of the World Guard. Though I guess being in a group makes it a little easier. <laughs> I was ready I was ready to give up on, shoot, I'm like, he could be a damage sponge. He could be the one that has high aggro stats or something. As long as it's not Knuckle. I'm so sorry, shoot. What happened? What happened? What happened? Nothing happened. Oh, Nero's attack! <laughs> this is totally interrupting the fight. This never had to happen. Because Napalm. Right, they don't even know who's attacking. Shocker. Gon is undeterred. What do you realize? What do you realize? Oh, they would be, yeah, their invisibility would be dispelled. Also, they would die. <laughs> that's right. They would also die. That is true. Oh, that's terrifying. Yeah, because they're animated, I forgot that they, they also don't see them. Wow. Get in there. I had not, I would never have thought of that ever until like later. Where's Knuckle? <laughs> Where's Knuckle and Meloria? Where do they go? Oh, they're decomposing? Admiration. It is pretty amazing. Gon is not thinking about shoot though. <laughs> I mean, he's brave for sure. All that's correct. It's more like, there is something in front of me that I must smash. It's very familiar. Okay, I was about to say it's not so bad, but if that's how you feel about it. Oh, 
You never know where it's going to come from. The line from that monologue that was the most striking to me was the one about never considering it because you figure it's just the realm of the strong. As if there's a category of person, there's weak people and there's strong people. The order is probably reversed. The choices don't follow the label or category. Probably the label or category follows the, the choices, the actions. I mean, I don't know if that's totally true or one directional. There's probably in there somewhere that's cyclical, but I'll take anything that puts things more in my own hands. We have seen him hide. Oh no. Okay, please do that. Get in there, Moral. Get in there yourself. Get your vape in there or something. There we go. They're still alive. Nice. This is a really huge moment. We don't really know. We don't know like how much one sucker punch, full strength sucker punch will really do. He might just shake it off. And then it might be over. Hopefully this wrecks up a huge debt. Clear the path at least. Yeah, he just shook it off. But you can't shake this off, can you? It's <laughs> so cool. Oh, the APR also is invisible. And he wouldn't know, he wouldn't know what's happening at all. This status effect strategy is so good. Really all the other stuff to do is survive, which I mean, it's asking a lot, but... Wow, we really took this out of the book of Resident Evil. Yeah, the punch was really, it was a 1 HP thing. Oh, oh yeah, he can get a read on it now, right? Ooh, that... I think this does exist in games. For example, Toxic in Pokemon is an exponential HP loss thing. But there's also things like Region, which could be better than Chapter 7 Bankruptcy. It would be like Dividend Reinvestment Plan or something, but with way more starting capital. When I was playing the hell out of Skyrim, I made a regenerative build so that even if I got attacked by the guards, the damage they could all do collectively was less than the HP I would gain per second or whatever. So there was no risk of dying of anything other than falling. Wow. I can't read. Might take a while. It can hit him again, no? You can keep draining. You don't have enough time, most likely. And the king is going to be even more. And you just survive this to get to the king. Oh yeah, the king. <laughs> she just turned it up. I love how it looks like fire on the palace, but like raining blood on the inside. I mean, he's fine. He's 100% fine. She has to wait. <laughs> yeah, it might take a while. It might take 10 seconds, which is a long time in Hunter x Hunter. He's protecting her. He's, protect he's protecting her. Protecting her from the dragon fire. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. He never do anything to the king, though. Raising your terminal velocity. Someone like Peter takes no fall damage, unlike my Skyrim character. She was preparing for launch. The amount of distance she closed. It's like what she did with Kite. And we're naked now. Oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Oh no. Oh no, it's, the, it's not the enemies. I don't think it's the invaders. Oh, did Netero? Oh no. Kalua's grandfather hurt Kamugi, injured Kamugi. I didn't want that. Nobody wanted that. Hopefully, it's non fatal. She's alright. She's alright. She's okay. Her lip got cut. White stomach cut and lip cut. Oof, it was a chilly image. And the silence, too. 
I hope she's all right. That was like the one thing holding him to earth. He may not be able to fight. Although he may use his grief to like just let loose, abandon everything. Oh, we're all here at the same time. Can you give me a minute? I'm, I'm preoccupied. You messed up. You messed up. It took someone else's. Damn it! Wait, she's alright. She's okay. Yeah, she's alright. Oh, you just gotta kill your fire a little bit, right? You, think, you came in here thinking you're gonna kill this ant creature. And he's like, my shogi friend. What would be even more heartbreaking, maybe even be advantageous for the king, is to be like, either of you two know any way to heal. Actually, Neferpito can do it. Heal, heal, yeah, 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 heal her. Uh, yeah, normalcy in the face of a terrible situation is kind of scary. The scary part is not when your girlfriend yells at you. It's when you know you've done something wrong and <laughs> she acts like everything's fine. Those are the moments of fear. What is she planning? Yeah, do what you're told. Listen to the man. She's crying. <laughs> oh, this is uncomfortable. <laughs> Let's see how this plays out. Very interesting. This is so interesting. What do you make of this? Out of respect, well, it speaks well of them, I, I guess. Wow, that's amazing. I'm glad. It's a huge relief. Even Zeno. You know, Zeno the assassin. See, they now have something in their hands that's a trump card in this fight. The king wants to move them away from the palace so that Kamugi doesn't get hurt. And everyone knows that, and everyone knows that everyone knows that. It's showing your hand. If they were so inclined, Netero and Zeno could absolutely use that to their advantage. She would become, in, in essence, a hostage. But it's so cool that they're doing all this, you know, given this life-threatening situation and the stakes for humanity and everything, while keeping in mind, uh, like, a higher code of ethics and boundaries. I don't think you see that very often. It gives a seriousness to Netero's character that we haven't really seen much of. The last episode's backstory aside, Thinking back to the Hunter exam and how he's sort of morally gray, it seems in some ways, you know, like the killer's past, etc. But not here. I mean, this is really showing who he is. And again, Zeno, this professional killer. I wonder if all of the crew will feel that way. You lost an emotional step there. Like imagine a mosquito lands on your arm and you instinctively go to swat it and then you see it crying over its, its dead chess friend and saying like, you can swat me, but please save my dying chess mosquito friend. You'd probably think twice. Dr. Bryce. For the love of God, save Kamugi. The king will honor his promises though. He could have just killed them right there. I fear for you. I fear for you, <laughs> given how calm the king is, and the fact that you hurt his best friend and his daughter figure. You are now kind of at fault. Netero and <laughs> Zeno kind of lost that the momentum, the edge of justification, and decided to just smush an insect. Whereas the king has gained it, you know? These people just busted into my palace while I was playing Gunji, killing my innocent friend who couldn't even defend herself from a bird. Who are the real monsters? Monster X and X monster. That's terrible PR. <laughs> you did not represent yourself well in this fight. Of course, it doesn't mean that the king doesn't deserve a good smushing. He very well might, but I don't know. Optics are kind of important sometimes, not least of all to yourself. The calm is terrifying. The calmness is what makes it terrifying. This is another example in this arc of using the opposite of the easy reaction for effect. You know, Peter's unceremonious appearance, right, being beheaded off screen, and the king's calm. You know he's about to mess them up. Also, in hindsight, I think I get it more why there was a lot of talk, seemingly unnecessarily at the time, about whether or not to consider the humanity of your ant opponents. Kite warned going about that very thing, if I remember correctly, but we've also seen a lot of humanizing moments from the Chimera ants, from which this seems like sort of the ultimate culmination. You know, this beautiful friendship that they formed, the internal soul searching that the king was doing, this moving expression of humanity and love and compassion. He's not making it easy. Also really funny to think about my comments very early on in this arc, which was the case to some degree, but more significantly wasn't, where I'm like, oh, this is a great opportunity for Gon and Kalua to just have a bunch of aimless, unimportant creatures to destroy with their massive net power, you know? Not only is that not true, not only is the king super human and compelling, they are not smashing anything, at least not in this section of the story. Oh my god, imagine... Imagine Knuckles seeing this. 